Warning, Will Rogers. Warning, Will Rogers. Fill in the jam. Fill in the jam. Warning. Warning. Thank you, Robot Man. This Bamboo Lab Y adapter upgrade almost didn't happen because I couldn't get the upgrade to work properly due to the filament getting stuck inside. Hi, this is Ken of Risk Innovations, and today I'd like to show you how I solved the filament sticking issue, and it only cost me a penny. There are several Y adapter designs out there to allow you to easily feed filaments from an external spool of filament without having to disconnect the Teflon tubing of the Bamboo Lab AMS, which is their automated material system. Bamboo Lab doesn't recommend to put TPU filament into the AMS because it's too flexible, and they also don't recommend to put cardboard spools either. Also, there are several filament manufacturers' spools that don't fit into the AMS, so you need to use the external spool holder in those instances. I found this Y adapter design from Ed Johnson on printables. He has come up with a clever design, and I really like that he designed the Teflon threaded fittings into the end of his adapter. This is Ed's Fusion 360 drawing, and I have sliced the Y adapter so you can see a cross section of the inside of the adapter. The problem I found was that the filament was getting hung up at the spot where the filament entered into the tip of the Teflon tubing. Here is the Teflon tubing fitting into the Y adapter, and here is an example of the filament. I tried beveling the inside of the Teflon tubing, but that didn't help. Ed even designed an insert to address the issue, but I still had filament getting hung up at the tip of the insert. So I decided to try to move the tip of the Teflon tubing to inside the tubing quick disconnect fitting, with my theory that there was a tighter tolerance inside the tubing fitting. As an added bonus, let me show you how easy it is to add commercial components from your McMaster car into your drawing. If you're not familiar with McMaster car, they are a major component distributor in the US. There is a link directly in Fusion 360, so you can just click on Insert McMaster Car Component. Then search for the component in the McMaster Car catalog. Choose your part, then choose 3D step file format, then download. And boom, there it is in your drawing. Isn't that cool? So this fitting isn't exactly like the fitting I bought on Amazon but it will work for illustration purposes. On the Amazon version, the inside of the fitting has a conical shape, so I thought the filament would slide down the inside of the fitting similar to a funnel effect and slip into the Teflon tubing. The problem I ran into was that the machine marks inside the fitting were preventing the filament from smoothly moving into the Teflon tubing. So I thought to solve that, I would use a Dremel tool with a stone fitting on the end of it and then try to smooth the inside to remove the machining marks. The problem I ran into that I couldn't really find the exact stone that would fit into the fitting, so I was stumped. Then I thought, I have this new $1,500 3D printer. Why don't I just design a miniature funnel insert and fit it into the fitting to guide the filament into the Teflon tubing? After about eight prototypes, I came up with this design. I drew a profile of the miniature funnel insert in Fusion 360. Then I used the revolve command to create the three-dimensional model. I saved the file to 3D print, then I opened up the file on Bamboo Lab Studio, sliced the model, and then sent it to the printer. In less than 10 minutes, I had my prototype. The entrance is wide enough that there is plenty of clearance to allow the filament to scrape along the inside of the Y adapter and then into my funnel insert. I also made the narrow portion of the funnel insert a smaller diameter than the Teflon tubing, so the filament had no choice but to slide into the Teflon tubing. I did notice the filament was getting hung up on the layer lines of the funnel insert, so I sanded the inside of the funnel insert using 320 grit sandpaper. Here I am installing the Y adapter to the back of my X1 carbon. Another thing I like about Ed's design is that the mounting clip is integrated into the adapter so I can attach it to my printer. This, this takes the strain off the tubing so it's not just hanging there in space. 
Here I am running a print using the Y adapter and the Bamboo Lab AMS system. And here I am using the external spool by simply inserting the filament into the Y adapter. Combining Ed Johnson's Y adapter with my miniature funnel insert did the trick. It only cost me a penny in plastic to make my funnel insert. This was a simple yet challenging project to troubleshoot, experiment, and develop a solution. It was truly an improvement to my Bamboo Lab 3D printer. Now, let me show you a clever design of a filament dry box using a cereal box. This design comes from Build It Make It at builditmakeit.com. I bought the cereal boxes on Amazon and I 3D printed a modified version of the design that my friend Steve came up with. He separated the desiccant holder and added a screw to ensure the desiccant beads didn't escape because if you spill them, they will go everywhere. Ask me how I know. Steve also designed this thread reinforcing piece that allows you to thread the Teflon tubing fitting into the cereal box, which makes it a more reliable connection. I drilled a 11 32nds of an inch diameter hole approximately 2 inches from the top of the cereal box and I installed the Teflon tubing fitting and Steve's reinforcing piece. I 3D printed the spool holder and the rollers and assembled them using four bearings. I installed the roller assembly into the cereal box and then I added the desiccant box. Next, I added a piece of Teflon tubing at the fitting. Then, all I had to do was thread the filament into the Teflon tubing and add the sealed lid to the cereal box. The dry box keeps the humidity down to about 22% compared to the room humidity of 62%. Then, it's simply a matter of pulling the filament out of the Teflon tubing and inserting it into the new Y adapter we just installed on the 3D printer. The Y adapter and the cereal box filament dry box make a great combination upgrade to my printer. Let me know in the comments below if you have an example of where you solved the problem using a 3D printer. I'd love to hear from you. For my next video, I'll be showing you the top 10 upgrades I made to my Bamboo Lab X1 carbon printer that you can do for any of the Bamboo Lab models of printer that you may have. When that video is available, the link will be here. In the meantime, you may be interested in my most popular 3D printer video on which is better, the Prusa Mark IV or the Bamboo X1 carbon? And that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye!